you don't have uh, uh, like your college that we are really always really envious about uh, we don't have sport we've got two hours of sports mm -hmm. for week in general so you can just do many different sports but for in two hours a week what you can learn you know or why you can how you can practice so all our sport life is in the afternoon and the family have to bring you there so this is a big deal because compared to other country where sport is one of the main uh, yeah. moments yeah. yes it's normal for you you don't know that in our culture and luckily sport is uh, at the it's completely, it's an existence at school. I think the minute I stepped on a practice field for rugby, the calling happened. Uh, an eight year plan to be on the team. And I was in it within two years. Don't wait until you are a pro to be a pro, right? Like I like doing something, look, stopping and learning from it. Like it just looked like it was a heavy hit. If it's up, it's not up. You know, that's the first time I played like professionally. I'm making rugby money. How can I make money outside of it? And those two Scottish guys, and they said, oh, you're, um, you're here for the movie. Rugby is a sport where that's often coupled with actually having a good time. He looked at me and he says, you guys are off. Yo, what's up? everybody welcome to another great episode of grow rugby my name is gift gift time a bailu and this is a show where we speak to people about the opportunities that they have found created or taken advantage of via rugby now guys we got an amazing guest I right, this one was such a fun one uh, we're taking it overseas to Italy we're speaking with Erica Mori a uh, former uh, mem board member on the Italian Rugby Federation Union. Uh, actually, it was funny because at the time that we recorded, she had just uh, had, had lost an election um, for to, to renew her time there. But that being said, she was still an integral part of the last few couple years of it. On top of that, she is also one of the first Women's Rugby World Cup attendees had been played for the women's rugby world uh haven't played for italian women's rugby um over the course of 20 30 plus years uh haven't attended multiple rugby world cups and is very <laughs> very much passionate about this sport of rugby and it, it was such a great thing to be able to understand and learn more about Italian culture and and the way that they go about uh, rugby and the things that she has in, in sight in terms of changing opportunity and recreating how they develop youth rugby because despite what we th think you know even though it's in Europe and Italy has a, a a rugby culture that has been present for a long time it's still one that is still in its series of development still trying to find its evolution and of course is competing with the foe Association football, aka soccer. Arr! Arr! <laughs> but no, this was really a really good conversation. I, I genuinely enjoyed uh, talking with Erica, and I, I was really happy to be able to get the chance to do it. Um, guys, I, I hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed some wild major league rugby because apparently they wanted to go out of their way to actually start proving that they're not just following who is on paper the best and proving it like underdogs started winning saber cats won freaking seattle sea wolves won like are you serious like you guys have been losing all this time started getting used to the trend then of course come week four you want to go and do things the right way and win it like why are you messing with my predictions you're messing with my predictions. I, I don't I don't know I don't know why you're doing this to me. No, no. no. But it was a great weekend of rugby. You had women's uh, um, Six Nations going on. Obviously, the aforementioned MLR. There was plenty of rugby happening around the country. Lindenwood out here playing and life and you know uh, uh, you know Saber Cat uh, Houston A A A T A A T X. Uh, doing their thing, yo. It was it was it was a wild game of rugby out here in the states and around the world. It's nice to see rugby coming back. Obviously, COVID is 
maybe subsiding is the wrong word, but at least it seems to be getting in control in some places. These vaccines are rising, and I guess the other half of it is people just don't want to stay inside anymore. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting process of how this is continuing to go and, you know, just how we continue to do things. So, But needless to say, I hope you guys were able to take care of yourself. I hope you guys just, yeah, you know, for me, the weekend is, is always – uh, one moment of chill, the next moment I'm setting up for the next thing. So we'll go from there. Guys, I want to thank everybody who continues to listen to the podcast, man. Look, we are up to, this doesn't sound like a lot, but I am grateful. All right. I am absolutely grateful. 120 downloads a month is something big, especially coming from scratch, especially considering that we've been at this podcast for a year now and just slowly developing, slowly getting more and more people, getting different guests coming through, getting a wider range of, of people that typically would not either get talked to or, you know, it, it, we stick within a certain aspect of it where it's just what we're doing on the field. And as much as I like to get on-field stuff, I always want the uh, off-field items. So I, I, I love hearing these stories, and I'm so glad that you guys are also getting the chance to listen and, and enjoy it and take information along with it. And if you guys, please, if you guys feel like there's good value that comes out from it, from wherever you are, because this is coming, I'm getting listeners from around the world. Shout out to you, Germany, for, for your listens. Didn't expect that one, but I am here for it. Obviously, U.S., thank you. South Africa, thank you. You know, and there's actually a bunch of other countries. I don't want to go through the whole list. But thank you to all of you guys. Um, but please, if you guys feel like there's something there that is of value to be able to listen to it, please share it with your friends. Get them to subscribe. Yo, get find them that, that one episode that connected you in that said, hey, man, let me go ahead and listen to this all the way through. And then you did it from there. Uh, so go ahead and you can do that. Uh, and uh, if you guys also could, in the meantime, could you guys put a review, stars, written on the Apple Podcast or uh, uh uh, or Spotify for the review section. It helps us. It helps generate more looks. We got we got one. We got one one written review, and we got five starred reviews. I'm I'm actually okay with that. You know, we we're out here growing. We're developing bit by bit. So if you guys can, and then of course, if you guys are checking out the video feed of this, please subscribe to the YouTube page at. YouTube.com slash Gift Time Rugby Network. That's Gift Time Rugby Network with two T G I F T T I M E Rugby Network. Uh, and please subscribe to the page as we continue to develop it and continue to grow. There's a bunch of content from old games to skits, um, news reports. It's kind of a not, like nice little nostalgia bit in some ways as as we continue to develop and pr- promote more uh, content, more and more. So, in the meantime, I hope you guys are ready for this. The great Erica Mori, Italian r- Women's Rugby World Cup participant, team member, all right, um, and, of course, former board member for the Italian Rugby Federation. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Grow Rugby. My name is Gift Gift Tommy Bailu, and we have an incredibly V, very important I, person P. I, I always mess it up a little bit, but just know we got an amazing person with us today, a former Rugby World Cup uh, p- player, uh, two-time Rugby World Cup uh, player, a board member for the Italian Federal Rugby Union, and yo, know, a world rugby, a world rugby spotlit person to watch, Erica Mori out of Italy. Erica, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you very much. I've never been presented like this. I, I feel like a, a star of Hollywood, but in reality, I'm just coming from the mud, the Italian mud. But so, look, you know what they it's say. Me, it's me. <laughs> 
<laughs> look, look, you know what they say in this day and age, you know, everybody is a star. You just got to wait for the shine to happen. So I want to make sure that your shine is as bright as it needs to be. So we're going to, even if you're going to be humble, I'm not going to be humble for you. I'm going to let you get this. Okay. So I feel all the light on me and feel I can be really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, look, you know, I, I always love you know, telling people how I first found out. And, and, and it was really interesting because whenever um, it was presented to me uh, to be able to talk to you, I, you know, for me, I, I've, I've always tried to learn what's going on outside rug, it, it, within the rugby community. Uh, I think it's one of the most interesting places uh, to learn about rugby aside from what you do on the field. So when I had a chance to look through your, your resume and I'm like, oh my goodness, uh, this this woman has been, this, she's, she's got the resume. She's been in this, you know, and, and seeing exactly what your mission was, it got me even more excited to be able to talk to you and, and seeing what you're trying to do with women's rugby in Italy. So, um, you know, I, I had to, I, I'm, I, I told you before, but again, I'll say it. I'm really honored to be able to have a chance to talk to you because uh, you really are making moves in this uh, global rugby community in more ways than one. <laughs> Grazie. So let, let's begin to come from foreigner country. Uh, I think that the most important thing is exchange, experience, because uh, our worlds are so different and uh, things are done so differently that perhaps just having um, an information about how on the other side of the world works, this could be really interesting for, because uh, we can just uh, turn on a, a spark to begin a new thinking, a new um, idea to put on the, on the field. And so the, the most rich thing that I can just, uh, that I have is just make an exchange with, our, with other rugby players or women, men or women, because for me, rugby players that does not have gender. Right. Because for me, this is really important because when they say, ah, so you are feminist. I'm not a feminist. I'm a contemporary lady. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, so the contemporary, hear about the equitability and it's not just about yeah. the, the trying to do it. And I, I feel like those, and I love that you are very technical about that because I think in the language, whenever people speak on these things, it gets lost and, and people get lost into the political element of it when it's just like, no, we're just talking about a common sense positioning. Sure, sure. because if we, if we just say, oh, let's go, only women, we will do the same mistake. Exactly. So until we, we have to speak about humanity, not gender. This is my point of view. And for this, I really work for, because I always work also for the fact of, of the right of being different. So this is in the pitch, out of the pitch. This is my idea. And I really work in, in rugby for Italy. And being a rugby, a female rugby player, right. uh, it, when I began, it was really a, a challenge because um, no one thinks that uh, a woman can play rugby. I'm, I'm speaking about 30 years ago. I'm not speaking about nowadays. Nowadays, luckily, it's better. It's a lot better than, than once. But obviously, being pioneers in every sector, you, you begin at things. Uh, you've got challenge, but this makes things fantastic. I agree with that. And, and I want to even begin, let's, I want to speak on that and, and go to it from the beginning, because uh, I always say with every superhero, there's an origin story. So uh, <laughs> for you, Erica, I want to know, you know, how did you get started with rugby and how, and obviously, get to where it led you to here today? Uh, I began, my father play, played, but it was not him to take me to the pitch, but it was, I was a girl guide, and one of my friends of the girl guide, she, know, she said, oh, I, I began to play rugby. I said, no, really, because I always been to the pitch because I was, my father before played and then trained. So I always think to have 15, 20 uncle. <laughs> well, he was the teammate of my father and the players of my father. But you know, when you are when you are young, you, when you are a kid, it's and you don't make this kind of family. yes, it's all family. So I always thought to have a big family. All men, I didn't understand these these things, but anyway, uh, so for me, it was a fantastic world. In that period, I was throwing javelin. 
So I was really high level uh, and athletic athletes. Yeah. And that was my luck because when I began to play, I was really, really fit for the period because I trained already four, five times a week. And in that period, it, rugby was at the beginning, they trained twice a week. So I made my training with the athletics and then in the evening, the training with the rugby. So my performance was uh, already yeah. high. Yeah. But not because just because I come from another sport and I was uh, in the I was the fifth in Italy of the throwing the javelin thrower, and wow. so no no that was uh, the, the why I began with with a uh, with a gear more. <laughs> and the second things and that I've got uh, the um, the sense of tackle. Yeah. I was a, a natural tackler, sure. and so. You're already used to throwing. You, you already have the upper body strength just because was, of the field. Yes, but also the attitude. For me, tackling was the most fantastic, enjoying thing that I could do. So <laughs> they, they just told me, go wing, as usual. Go to the wing. You see the, the other one who doesn't have the same color of a shirt. You right. don't have to make them pass. That was the technical instruction that I had. And so I, I was super fast, super fit, and a tackler. Nice. Was step by step. You know, I, I love that because it, it even reminds me of whenever I started playing because for me, it was coming out of uh, American football and uh, I tried to play in college and, and then so when I graduated from college and found rugby, they put me at flanker and they were just like, because, you know, I was just like, they were just like, look, you don't have to touch the ball, just, just go and make sure you don't attack that other guy. Make sure you see that guy in the 10. Just get to him. I was like, all right, <laughs> we can go because. That's all. Okay. Yeah, sure. all right. <laughs> oh, and, and, and I love that. It, it, it does stand to fact, though. Obviously, you know, you had already rugby inside your blood. Even if you weren't playing, it was already going through, flowing through it because of your father and, and, and your uncles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I love that. So, you know, Whenever you got started, and obviously, like you said, you, you were already doing things in a, at an athletic level, but when you first got on that pitch, do you, what was that feeling? Do you, do you remember like that feeling of like, okay, now, because it's one thing to do field work, track and field, you know, you, you understand being the crowd in fifth in Italy already, you understand the crowd, but when you're about to go start running and you're going to be on there for the next 80 minutes, you're just like, okay all right, am I really ready for this? Am I really ready? Like, what was that feeling for you going in at first? I, I don't know if it was my fullness of base. I, I never were so worried in reality. I just say, I will do my best. And what's more? And the thing that if I have to tell you one, one remember that I had was the, and it was a thing that I love, really love. It was the noise of the, you know, I don't know in English, under the shoes. Oh, the whenever it's like crunching on the grass itself? Not, not on the grass because we didn't have grass. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was how I dreamed to have grass but I know that's the reality the grass also today for the women's sector is just a dream <laughs> and uh, no no the, 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 before the pitch went from the oh, from the locking rooms the sidewalk oh like whenever yes, the, the the sidewalk this 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 fantastic, remember, you know, that you've got in your ears. And, and it was like the, 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 the noise of the thunder before the, before the storm, no? So it was something that prepares you because it was not only your noise. It was the noise of, of 30 people that clack, 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 was entering, entering, entering. And that was the moment. No, I, I can feel that. I, I'm already feeling the intensity just even hearing you talk about it. I'm like, I'm ready to go back out and play again. Like, I need to get back out Yes, there. I really would like to come back to play, <laughs> for sure. Because uh, is, is, uh, are these the things that you will remember? Are they, they, the stupid jokes in the, in, in the, in, in the clocking rooms? Are the the funny thing that when you get to the pitch and you are angry about your work, about the things that happen during the day, and you just put your bag and sit on blah, 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 and someone of your teammates says a stupid things, and, and you look at her and say, why I have to be angry? Now it's time to play, and, and when you come out from the pitch, you are another person, exactly. again. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's, these it's, are the things that you remember. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a baptism through play. Yes. You yes. Know. No, and I so, like it. For this and the fact that I play in many, many teams because of my, I, you know Dinosaur? Mm -mm. The Dinosaur? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. The, yeah, yeah. We, we, we get a, the, the dinosaur extinguished, right? <laughs> right. My team extinguished because we were um, on a university team. Okay. And so the girls, uh, when finished to, 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 to do the university, to attend the university, come back home. Mm -hmm. So my generation, we were really focused and convinced. And whatever women just or female passed from the distance of our arms, we were blocking. Like, no, come to play, come to <laughs> But the generation after mine was not so um, I, let's I brilliant. Yeah. And so, leader by leader, my team mm, always get less people. So, um, I, I was already playing for the national team, so I wanted to, to continue and I have to move to Padova. And I played four years there, two years in another town that is close mm -hmm. to Treviso. And then I go, went to Piacenza. And so I played with many different area girls and Italy, you know, it's really long. Right. And so we are really different a bit from the area you are, are living into. Yo, I want to talk to you guys about the HBC Rugby Classic and Music Festival. Yo, this is the best event that is coming out in terms of cultural rugby it is a representative of the historically black colleges and universities but not just simply to represent for them but to be able to continue to promote the development of rugby in all communities and we want you guys to know that we are coming back for may 1st and 2nd 2021 do not want to miss this one. I know there's a chance that you guys might not be able to come into the stadium, but please be sure to get ready to watch it. We have a great set of teams coming up, great invitations from youth rugby all the way up to senior level rugby. So we are not just going to make it so that you only look for or understand one part, but this is for the whole shebang. This is something that is growing that will only make us better. So definitely check out more information at www dot h b c u rugby classic dot com or find us on uh, social media at h b c u rugby on twitter and h b c u rugby classic on facebook and instagram guys i know you're gonna love this so um, so th that that that's actually really interesting so it, it's one thing i always wanted to understand and, and even you're kind of giving me a perspective but what was the, the women's play like for Italy? Because obviously Italy has a much longer um, successful history with rugby than here in the U.S. But with women's, it seems that there's always a little bit of an offset. But it sounds like you guys had a lot of teams at the point whenever you were playing. Was, was it a lot of teams or was it just happened to be you guys would find there was few teams but many pockets, like a few teams in small areas and you just – we're finding these pockets of one or two teams per area. Like, how do they uh, work? Uh, in reality, in the United States, you've got more teams than us. That's ah. for sure. That's for sure. And I, have to remember, and I have to remember you that the first World Cup, the United States women won. True story. Very true story. And uh, I've seen that match, and I remember the hookah. <laughs> the hookah was fantastic. She was running in the point that the referee signed, and she was already with the arms and, and in the air. raised, waiting for the two prop. And she was already running and putting like this. And, and we were looking at her. We never look at this attitude. That It's a mental attitude. She was ready and getting to the place. Uh, and, uh, and that was really astonishing for everybody. The United States beat England. Right. You know, um, that's 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 you're talking about the home the homemaker the person the, the the team that's supposed to be the king queen whatever the top of the game and is beat by a country that I guess for all intents and purposes you didn't expect to even be in the game. Absolutely, we didn't even know that United States play rugby. That that's because we were ignorant. I'm so sorry for our ignorance, but. But we are speaking in 1991. Right. It was the first time that women meet internationally to, all together. 
Right. So they were Russia and uh, Russian. The the Russian teams was a, a really surprise too. Or but you know you are more used to know about uh, New Zealand, the England, but United right. States uh, never heard about it. But in that period, you know, internet was not so strong. So. We didn't have all this information and all this exchange. So we, we know obviously about England, uh, Wales, France, uh, and so the European side. Exactly. But not, not a lot of information. For example, Australia teams doesn't exist. Argentinian doesn't exist. South African doesn't exist. So all the rugby, the male rugby um, map was completely different. Right. For example, Spain. The women, the, the 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 women team of Spain, it was super strong, mm -hmm. and the men are not at all. Interesting. So already different uh, weight and um, and balance in the geography of rugby. Right. Uh, so for this, uh, for was a really shocking thing that you won the World Cup, but well, we really we were happy, yeah. Huh? We were happy because the fantastic things in sport and that you never know what is going to happen. Right. And it, it also goes back to the factor of not of, of being able to see what happens whenever you have different styles start to come together from different places. Because I have to imagine, especially whenever if you're used to just being within the same cycle of Europe and then the occasional New Zealand, you know, from here and there, you're used to seeing the same rugby over and over again. But now, whenever the Rugby World Cup uh, for women occurred, now you're getting uh, just these different aspects of it. Same foundation, but different aspects of the game. Yes, but the matter is, in that time, we were not so evolved. So right. we, you, now you can see... Um, um, a characteristic of the of the nation has a style of playing as a, um, yes a style of playing once uh, you you see really the attitude and you see the the, the skills right because obviously we were speaking really of a, a period where just finding other team to play it, it was a miracle right because uh, in Italy in that time we were 12 teams in all Italy and so we had to try to try to travel perhaps 600 uh, kilometers to play. So it was really, really uh, at the beginning of everything. And so obviously, yes, you can take once I can just once we 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 took a train to get to to a town that was um, more or less. 250 kilometers far from us, but it's not your distance. It's our distance. You are <laughs> used to big distance. We are not. So uh, we took the train. The train was in late, and we just missed the train after. Oh. So we have to do, yes, just not to pay um, the fine. We took a taxi, and we arrived in taxi. We made 100 kilometers, arriving in six taxis to the, to the pit. And everybody said, Wow, why are, they are so rich that they came in taxi? No, no, we, we took the train. We don't, we don't have another way. And so uh, things like this, it was in the mountain, so we could not take another solution. So it was just a fantastic thing that seems a really prehistorical period, but it was like this. But, you know, it, it also goes back to the, the rawness of it. Like sometimes it's, it's the beauty in how how simple it was. And, and I have to imagine Eve, even in that, there was such a level of enjoyment because everything, what did they say? Like you bond through the bond through the trauma. So like, because of all the struggle, it adds so much more to what you do on the pitch, adds so much more to how you connected with your teammates at the time and, and go. From sure. There. I told you if that, if you want, I can sing because we have, I don't know how many, 15, 20 songs uh, in my team because we have to make so many kilometers. Uh, I played really badly guitar. <laughs> I took my guitar and we just made up song, you know, you That's just awesome. change the text. And so you have the song of the, of the scrum, the song of the number nine, the scrum that speak with the fullbacks, the fullbacks that, that answer back. This is all singing. but. Because we had a lot of time 
to pass together to get to the to the other team. Right. So it was a fantastic way of spending time together, having long and um, this other thing, you know, that is said is not the, um, the the place where you have to arrive, and is how you arrive to the place exactly. really often, exactly. uh, that you remember. I love it. So, you know, so so in this point, all right, and, and I'm a little interested. I, I want to kind of get to a little bit more on how you got to the Rugby World Cup and what that experience was, but then and then we'll move forward from there. But you know, mm -hmm. going from a javelin play, a, a javelin thrower to your first game. Now you're in a rugby. Like, what was that process like for you? But uh, I don't remember nothing of a uh, traumatic. Yeah. I it was uh, in reality um, in the athletics uh, um, sport. There are many different sectors. They have the runner, the jumpers, the throwers. Uh, always have been a group, on, unless in my town. So we were really used to train all together. Mm. We were a sort of team, but I threw javelin, the other one the disc, and and we were uh, already a group. Yeah. And I was uh, uh, already used to 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 work all together. Now it's not the same thing of having a team that focused on a match and just uh, connecting one to each other it, it, it's a school right. it's like a school and the fact also it's a thing that I always say that in this school the first thing that you learn is uh, what you can like or dislike a person but you could not recognize that there is a 10% of positivity in everybody right. so you have to admit it so Hey, no, because uh, you say, ah, I don't like it. I don't like her, I don't like him. When you're a teammate, you, you recognize that there is something good in everybody. Exactly. And this is a, a big, great lesson for life. Because also when you're in an office and you don't like your colleague, you have to find what is good in and what is useful for you, for your work life. You always have to find something good. Otherwise, it's worse for you. Right. You know, and, and I love that philosophy. And I'm, I'm assuming this is something that you took with you as you started moving into your next moves. Um, so, you know, you, you, you had a great career playing rugby. You obviously, like I said, we had two Rugby World Cups in there. Um, when you decided to come to your conclusion with rugby, all right, or, or started to slow down, let me use the term properly, started mm -hmm. to, to slow down with the play. Yes, because I didn't stop playing rugby. It's because... Uh, um... I was the, you know, um, that um, Formula One. Yes. There is a one uh, one racetrack that is called Imola. That was the Formula One Italian racetrack, right. uh, and I was the marketing uh, manager. And so, really often, the the matches were combined with the day of the Formula One of the wow. Superbike or. Uh, um, or different international uh, or also national uh, competition. So I train, I train, I train, and that Sunday I could not go. Uh, train. So it was, uh, I was already 34, so I was not a young uh, <laughs> Well, you already, fit. look, look, as a person who is just about to turn 35, I no longer have the same feeling that 34 is not young. I feel like until you uh, get to like, like 85 or so, you got okay, to okay. You are right. You are right. I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm going for the fifty. I'm. I'm fifteen in some days, but I don't feel old. I don't feel old at all. But I just wanted to say that I was already at thirty-four in the stay staying at the high level. You have to train a lot because I stopped when I was forty, and I really remember that once you you were after the the match you were almost in good shape on Tuesday, Wednesday. I was destroyed. When I was told, I was destroyed until Friday. And then Friday say, okay, now I'm, I'm ready to train again. And that was also the motivation because I stopped athletics because for the first two years, I've made both. Right. But my performance in athletics was really conditioned by, by the efforts of the Sunday and, the, and the, all the hits and all the muscle, muscles, uh, Right. Uh, it's normal because uh, our sport is tough. 
Right. It's wonderful, but it's tough. We, we we have to deal with it and and respect. In my case, respect my trainers of the athletic side that she she she, she pretend to me to be to perform. How can I say? Uh, I, I, yes, I'm doing it, but my my level my result was lower than the the the. What, is, what would be the standard for it? Yeah, yeah. No, and and you do have to, and that makes sense. I was, and I was going to ask, you know, that decision on being and on having to eventually step aside for a little bit uh, from it because you do have expectations that you want for yourself when it comes to. Sure. It. So, for you, as in in doing so, you start pushing towards leadership. What made you decide to now start pushing towards positions of leadership? Um, I think that you don't have the perception at the beginning. You just expose your idea and the other agree or disagree. But I'm quite a disruptive a person, so I'm quite used that people say, no, 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 Erica, no. But, but I'm really committed in the thing that I do. So I, I always try to, you know, the lateral thinking, I'm a lateral thinker. Right. Always been like this. And so for me, Playing rugby when no one just was agreed to the fact of playing rugby, what's new? Right. I mean, every I think that a rugby player, women rugby player of my time were really proud of getting against what was the common sense. Right. Because it means not being free. Because it's a question of freedom. It's not a question of wanting to be different. It's just the fact that you want to express yourself as you are. No best, no better, no worse, just you. I agree. No, and, and, and it was one thing that I've found whenever I've watched, and it's one of the reasons why I'm a big believer that rugby impacts culture in a way differently than anywhere else because of the fact that, especially with women, is that you have this ability to change the mindset whenever it comes to contact and there's something about knowing that you can hit somebody that gives a different level of confidence i saw it in cambodia and uh with with the kampachia balap um organization and with the cambodian girls you can literally see the confidence that's developed from being able to know that they can tackle or do anything to that effect allows them to also feel like there's more that they can do than what would be expected for them or being a housewife or, you know, doing just a, a cooking or something that's it's limited to what the culture is expecting. And now whenever you do that, and if you're able to expand the mind just from play, just from play, it changes everything that you have moving up. So um, for you, you know, like you said, you, you guys in that time were disruptors, you know, and, and continuing so because so many of so many of y'all are in leadership now so it, it 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 goes to stand now as you're looking at it from that position and you're seeing rugby as a whole like what was one of the th and there, there's numerous ones but what was one of the the motivations for you and looking at how rugby was and and where you wanted it to go what was one of the key issues that you found in rugby that you were like i need a I, I am a person who needs to be a part of this to make sure that we can change this issue from uh, where it you is. You are speaking nowadays, the fact that I'm, I, I'm part of the, of the Italian board. Exactly. But, you know, in, in, in kind of that process, because I'm assuming there, there was, it wasn't just I played and then I want to be a part of the Italian board. It's, it was like, uh, yeah. Sure. You know. Sure. Uh, the matter was that when I stopped playing, it was asked to me to become part of the, because of the, we are structured as a, we've got a regional um, board and then the national board. And I was asked to be part of the regional board. So I stopped at 40, but at 40, I was elected because it's an election. So all the club of the area elect uh, elect people. So you could not say, I want to do it. Yes, you can say, I want to do it, but someone have to believe that you are the right person to do it. Okay. Right. So in that, in that moment, my, my president of the region, he was absolutely against women rugby. So I said, uh -huh. So if I want that female rugby develop in my region, I have to be in the, we call button room, you know, when you push a button, 
Yeah. I, I don't know if it works uh, because perhaps it's the power room. I don't know yeah, how, we, how we say it. We call it uh, coming to the uh, to the really is the boardroom to, to to the table room. You got to come to the table, basically. Okay. Same concept. Just whatever the power location is, I need a seat at that. I need to have a chance okay. to be exactly. Yeah. And so uh, one day proposed to me, uh, I said, and and no no women ever was in that position. So I said, why not? So I in the thing that we have also to understand that it being a rugby player doesn't mean being working that was never been my work right i work i i've done my path uh, university degree masters and so i was used in my work normal life and as like everybody uh, it, i was not an athlete uh, a professionist so perhaps a professionist doesn't have a, a clear vision of what means managing right. it was my work managing so for me, it was just putting at the service my experience in rugby after my work. Right. It's, so it's, say, it's, oh. a, it's essentially your your it's your give back to the community, but Absolutely. you're not you're not you're not going to be oh all in for just this. It's it's, it's yes. You yeah. say I'm a truck driver. I can drive the bus for the kids. I'm exactly. a no. I'm um. A, a, uh, a chef i work for the third time cooking for the kids at the end of the match i was a manager i was managed putting my my gift uh, my professionality in reality no and so i always say that being a member of the board it's the uh, you know a chain there are rings exactly right. it's called rings i'm the rings that uh, after the one who cook every Sunday for all the kids because everybody's got his role right and we could not exist if everybody doesn't do his own part right so who I'm managing if there is no one who take cares about the, the club mm? so I always I always been part of clubs obviously and uh, my my favorite sector was kids because kids kids in general not female or, or male just because in rag for us i don't live in a town where rugby is famous right at all not at all so we've got we are a really uh, lively town with many many different sports but soccer is the italian sport so everybody plays soccer and in my town basketball it's called basketball city so rugby is that third Which, yeah you know what's funny I hey guys i just want to take a quick moment to talk to you about the rugby outlet mall now i know you guys have heard me talk about this many times in the show before typically in the intro but i wanted to really make sure to get your focus on it because the rugby outlet mall is not just the commerce hub for gift time rugby but it is an area where we want to be able to create the movement and the symbolic elements that add to the movement the Rugby Outlet Mall is here so that we can have something to not just to have for the field, but more importantly to be able to have as a regular lifestyle. Because as you know, rugby is not just a sport. It's a whole way of life. It is a movement. And we have everything moving from cultural to your pop culture items like our Rugby Zon shirts or and sweats uh, sweaters as well as representing for the culture as we continue to develop the hbcu rugby classic and we want to continue to support these things because it only grows the sport overall we are continually growing to be able to make sure that we are connecting with you on a personal level as well as a rugby love and for you guys that are listening to the podcast and listening to this show want to let you know that you are going to get 20 percent off all gear that is under the category of gift time rugby network and the hbcu rugby classic that is basically the entire store and all you need to use is promo code grow rugby g-r-e-a-u-x rugby and with that you guys will get 20 percent off any clothing that is in the store as of right now and of course we're always building up more and more each time but we want to make sure that you are able to symbolize your rugby faithfulness to the rest of the world and let them know that there is an opportunity to be able to develop to grow and to get better each and every time in this sport so guys i hope you guys check it out 
definitely go and you guys can go to www.rugbyoutletmall.com. That is rugbyoutletmall.com. Guys, you're not going to want to miss one bit of this. Now let's get back to it. I, I, I've always had this issue and thankfully I, I feel like this post pandemic era will, will end up seeing a lot of the changes, but it was always one very interesting thing to me that when you realize that despite the fact that rugby exists in basically every country in the world, every sovereign nation in the world, it ranks under the top three in almost all, but maybe like three, four, five countries. We're talking New Zealand, the South Pacific, and, and that might just be about it, you know. So uh, to to continue to try and figure out how do you tap into getting it into younger people um, and, and really make it part of the culture, not even just younger people, but making it part of culture is its own um, obstacle and mission in and of itself. But there is another thing that is really different for United States and England, British citizen and Italy. Right. And this is the... Uh, real issue of our nation in uh, in Italy you don't have rugby at school right you don't have uh, uh, like your college that we are really always really envious about uh, we don't have sport we've got two hours of sports oh. per week in general so you can just do many different sports but for in two hours a week what you can learn you no know, or why you can how you can practice so all our sport life is in the afternoon and the family have to bring you there. So this is a big deal because compared to other country where sport is one of the main uh, yeah. moments, yeah. yes, it's normal for you. You don't know that in our culture, and luckily sport is, uh, at the, is completely, it's an existent at school. Yeah. So all you've got enough money to be to pay a club and do a sport for your kids or also the family who doesn't have a lot of money could not make any sport for the kids so also for the level of our sport when you say ah italian rugby you have to have someone that bring you to the club that think that rugby is the right and also the first choice speaking clear the first choice doesn't play rugby or if you live in Veneto, close to Treviso, where there is Benetton, close to Padova, there is an area where rugby is more famous of, of, uh, of um, more than um, more than soccer. But it's one region on twenty-one. Wow! So uh, the first choice, uh, athletically speaking, of that region go to rugby. Okay. All the rest, you do, you you have to have an uncle or a grandparent or someone who have played for chance. Wow. So, so do you feel like that's, cause obviously that just means you, you limit your talent pool, like just immediately off, off bat. It's, it's impossible. Very difficult. Do you foresee that, that rugby in Italy will, or at least a culture will make more movement so that there is actual uh, organic time for sports as opposed to that? Because if you don't even have that organic time and all you can do is just pay into it, it, it seems like it's just, a slow, steady, uh, you know, reduction of, of what the impact can be because at some point someone's going to be like, well, this just isn't valuable for me to even be a part of, even if I could afford it because we're not seeing something on the, we're not seeing an outcome that's worth it. Yes, but also the fact, it's just a problem of system mm -hmm. because, for example, we are, um, I, I, who follow the international politics, we are always in a mess. But yeah. for, for just to give you uh, a sign, uh, there is minister for every, for the economic side, for the wealth of far, far. In this moment, we don't have a minister for the sport. Just to tell you how it's not part of the, of the, of the structure. At all. And we, we've got a, a person who does the, who are the reference for sport, but we don't have a minister. Hmm. And that's, you know, like a, it's from... A that's, that's, that's the getting inside the, getting to the table just by itself. Like, there's one thing to get to the regional table, but if you're not even, if you're not even in the, in the building, let alone trying to get into the room, you yeah. know, how can we make any significant movement? Is, 
is that that's the structure is okay let me ask this and um if it if it seems impersonal you don't have to answer it but i do want to ask with what happens with italian rugby when it comes to six nations and development like that is this a lot of the issues as to why it seems like italy seems to falter uh when it comes to uh playing at that level uh it seems to to be slippery because you're just not the system hasn't been accommodating to development this is the base of the issue so you have really work on it because obviously England, Wales, Scotland, children play rugby at school. Right. It's the normal sport that they play every every week in the during the school time, and we have to have people who choose to bring the children. So our path is really longer, and moreover, um, we are perhaps not having the right, you know, when you do experiment, you say, I think that the, the academia are the perfect way to, to build the players. We are, we are seeing that no result about it. So we have to change the way in which we have to build our players. So perhaps changing the, the structure and we are thinking how to experiment to a new way because it's not because you take the super coach uh, from uh, well, Mars. Right. It's, it's the material that the super coach has available who make the difference. And I'm not speaking, I've got all my respect for the players who go into the pitch and, and, and just uh, face a country who prepare and or where is the choice. And when they say the number of the caps of our team compared to the other teams, we are perhaps 100 caps less. Hmm. And so you've got, you have to also think the fact that when you enter, if you are selected for playing the national team, you, your history behind your shoulder is the, your experience in staying at a high level. So obviously, if you don't have a championship that is a high level, right. your capacity to stay, to play in international level, it's, it's less right. because you are not trained to stay at that level. Right. So if our championship is at a lower level, also if you are the best of this championship, right. you face someone who on another planet. So this is the matter. For this, our, a lot of our players, what the, the most famous went to play in France, went to play in the Wasps, went to play in England. Yes, so they train at the high level and they can enter in the pitch knowing and being fit. Right. Also mentally, yeah? Right, because and again, it's a full development of, of the player itself. So, but with that being known, and especially with even yourself being on the, the rugby world, what is the Italian Rugby Union if the federal uh, Italian Federal Rugby Union doing to be able to get inside that room so that you can enact those systems? Because it seems like if, if, if it's known, I, and we always know it's easier said than done. So, you know, I, I know there's always a task, but what is it that you guys would need to do to get your minister of rugby to exist in the first place? So now people recognize it at a high level and you can at least compete with soccer and basketball in those elements. And then subsequently, what is it that you guys need to do from that point on to make sure that you guys are providing access um, to kids who would not otherwise have that access? Well, I, I can say that what I'm going to try to do, so I'm, I'm really strongly try. My idea is to change the focus, I mean, uh, when you we compete every day, well, let's say if we we have to we need to enter in the school. So mm -hmm. these two two hours a week for you, you have to do rugby. Right. I could not pretend that they accept us because in reality there is big stereotypes towards us that we are a violent sport. So you get hurt, and for the for a professor or a teacher. If your kids get hurt, it's a big deal. Right. So if you if you if someone hurts, you could not enter anymore in the school right. because it's it's a problem for the teacher to for the parents. Right. So we we really suffer about this 
um, um, stereotypes. Okay. So just to overcome these things, I for, first of all, I really go often in the school for this. This is my area that I like because I, I build a, a project that is called When I'm Worthy, You Are Worth It. Yes. And it's a way in which I can present rugby differently from us only being a sport. I present rugby as a, a tool for the school for building um, um, positive re relations. Right. Because and this is to 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 work against bullying. I, in this uh, project, I put art and rugby together mm -hmm. to work on self-esteem. And I say, what 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 is it? Rugby and art, nothing. And this is the matter. It's a competition for the kids. So the class just play. It's sharing two different uh, teams inside the class. And these two different teams, obviously, with the teacher, we just choose who are in one team and another one. So the people who've got the, the, the kids who's got problem between them, they stay in the same team, okay. not separate. So, so we're trying to create a unifying like, hey, look, if you're looking at a problem, let's see if we can work together because you have to like it's either. Yes, yeah. sure. But but working in a, on a two different um, competition. One is rugby tag, tag right. rugby. So you don't have uh, uh, impact, and the other is art. So they have to create uh, um, an installation. You know, when you use different materials uh, to to make in. Um, them understand that being different is so important right. because in one side obviously there is a, the, the one who are really fit or are, uh, the, the, they are good in sport will be the, the one who take the chariots and just uh, keep guide the group right. but on and you've got a score sorry for both the the, the two tries but so when they are in the creative side the one who are always running the they could not stay cool, no? And this is me because I, 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 I'm not able to play even card because after three minutes... <laughs> it's like, I, oh, I just need to go do it's, something. It's, it's so, funny. <laughs> yes. So when you, you need to be careful in drawing and painting and writing a poems or writing a song, a person who's got different characteristics than me are better than me. So he's the strongest in this moment and take the teams and guide and lead the teams. So this is the perception that everybody have to have that being different is the, the strength of the team. So there is a good socialization because the different is not uh, something that you have to condemn or be worried about. You have to be happy because being different, the score is higher in nothing that you are not able to do. You know, it's interesting because that it almost kind of goes counter to what people kind of would assume for rugby culture. And I was trying to be able to make sure I, I had it. And I, I remember uh, when I was talking with Katie Sadler um, um, some time ago, she, we were, she was talking about the combination of rugby and art. We didn't actually get a chance to go into it, but this sounds like where I was trying to go. But to the point that I was trying to make, it sounds like you're taking the element that we, whenever we talk about rugby and rugby is always about Everybody's the same. It's the team first and everything goes. And I think, and, 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 and it's always been imprinted so that if you stand out in individuality, it can be seen as a distraction of the team and you're stepping out from that. But I like the fact that you're actually going the opposite direction, which I'm much more of a believer in, and which is why I said earlier, I think post-pandemic rugby will now change from it being a structure, everything into what rugby is and make and instead make rugby into what everything else is. So basically look through the lens of a culture or an individual or a personality, and you will put that through what rugby is so that the person still comes through and it fits within, uh, I'm sorry, rugby still comes through, but it fits within the personality. And so now you get to see variation and you get to see uh, a much more flexible movement of of how rugby works within the team as well as within the the whole union within the the global element of it because you're recognizing the individual cultures as opposed to trying to box everybody in so i, I yeah. so this is a, but this is a way to present us not as a culture 
not only not only uh, limbs. Yeah, it's correct limbs. Correct. Yep. Yeah, and uh, this is the real matter because uh, our school needs a method. And so if I present rugby under another point of view, they don't put us in comparison with other sports. So yeah. these this months we do four hours of volleyball, four hour basketball, or four hour rugby. No, we use rugby as a tool, mm. a way of good relation to build good relation because obviously it's a it's 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 a game. Yeah. I just invented a game. It's just a way of uh, uh, building relation. I th I'm one of my claim is that playing you thinking with your hand. Right. So in the meantime, that you just uh, uh, not compete, so you play, and so it's something enjoyable. No, it's right. not. You, we are all equal. We have to be uh, um, able to give our um, talent. Uh, uh, available to everybody no it's just seeing on on the reality playing that you are useful to the group and someone else that is different is useful to the group and so you don't have to worry to be not the best i'm i'm the best in this but i'm the worst in other in something else right so how do we make this all fit within the puzzle and we're getting yes to learn how to yes. but also in a team if everybody is told two meters uh, who play number nine? <laughs> no, oh, so right. rugby is a really a combination of different body, different mindset. There is someone that doesn't pass the ball, even if you shoot, you should shoot him or shoot him. <laughs> that no. <was> <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and there is someone else who is always passing the ball or always kicking because it's frightened to the impact. So all the combination and the harmonization of our mental attitude and physical attitude and, and body, why you, you, you don't throw the, the lightest and the smallest uh, in the scrum or to, to go against the, the other team because it's not useful for the team. Right. And if you've got a superstar who run the 10, 100 meters in five seconds, but is not able to relate with his teammate, the teammate doesn't will pass him the ball or hear the ball because there is not, and the other one stop playing because he doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah, no, I, I and that, that completely makes sense. And I think, again, it goes back to the importance of why I've always believed that the culture of rugby, not so much like what we structure the culture, but like the culture of community of rugby is probably the most valuable component of the sport and the one that needs to be marketed the heaviest versus the overt, you know, whether you can say the brutality of the game or the chess of the game or whatever, because I think uh, ironically, the way that it forces people to have to fit together, fit the balances together, find their equilibrium to say the least sure. is, is a little bit more of the attractive quality than, than what then go, happens on the pitch. Because then after that, the outcome of that balance is this amazing, beautiful play that, that exists as, as a result of that. So for you, whenever you guys are presenting that, like what, I guess I, I have to ask, like what has been stopping the board from being able to, to work those programs or is it just because it's now coming to fruition or uh, but the, 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 uh, we were in, this was an experiment that i was going to do i was looking for money because obviously i could not make kids pay for this uh, project so i was looking for sponsorship and uh, i really had the the minister of the defense that said okay i just put my my sign on it because i think that is valuable no. and many other that but the, but and uh, the experiment should be on twelve thousand. yes twelve thousand kids okay oh wow One, Zero, wow. zero, yes. And so it was super big experiment, but you know, COVID. Ah, it catches us all. But you know what? So it all is okay. So at this point, it's just we're now trying to get the experiment restarted again. We from that moment we start. I, I, for me, it was like you know, two <laughs> years of work. Two years of work, knocking at all the door. I've got a wonderful project for our kids and so on. 
Uh, I can understand. I can understand. Now, I'm, in reality, I'm experimenting it personally uh, because uh, I, the other side of my life, I'm a contemporary artist. I work electrical cables. Oh, nice. And uh, I create a conceptual jewelry inspired by the women who change the world. So, uh, and, you, and I work only electrical cables. So I've got the artistic side. And so I'm working in a school. So one school, 100 kids, not 2,000. But, you know, number zero, I'm experimenting number zero nice. because uh, I can just do obviously the rugby side it was okay right. but the artistic side that in the big mother project is a um, totally um worked by the teacher because right. they can choose they were for sector in between you can choose you can do the artistic side uh, in videos dance poetry and um and um, painting so the, the school could choose one of these uh, different uh, way of expressing art and so the kids depending on the teacher they work on this not not uh, from outside and that was a, a thing that um i was structured the things thinking that the club of the area will adopt the school right. so it was a way in which this the team can enter in the school right in the in the in the budget was also the the, the money to pay the team the club to to send the teach the the train the the coaches, so on one side I paid I will pay the the the, the club for the work at the school. Right. On the other side, I permit them to have an entrance in the school exactly. without competing on others, and so I build the I I give the possibility to build the relation between school and club, that for us is fundamental. Right, and 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 I think and it feels very and it makes it a lot more organic because I know. Like you had said, the hardest part is sometimes convincing people of the value that they need to have for it. And uh, if, if you can't do that, you know, it's everything else just feels like you're just you're banging and just begging and it doesn't it doesn't connect. Yeah, with you. yeah, yeah. And so and it, it also the fact that the tag rugby uh, really make them less anxious, anxious about the the contact and also the fact of uh, making play girls and boy together and uh, this is another thing that we have to pass through also if i i really think that is important that kids grow playing together for one fact uh, i'm really really convinced about it okay. that we just help the sociality the the society in building equality because if i grow with the with a teammate, uh, Car um, Francesca, yeah. normally until 12 years old, our girls are super strong. Right. They beat even the male because they are, uh, it, it's normal, it's nature. Right. We just have a rush before and then you follow and you just overcome us. It, it's just the way in which it's we know. Yeah. Just yeah. maturing faster. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, they are if you if you if we make play boys and girls together they they grow up together sharing laugh uh, victory uh, problems uh, mud um, rain sun and they are used to think that they are equal so how a man of the future could think to even touch a woman or think that she's uh, less valuable if you are raised up with a girl who are super strong who do all the tries <laughs> who are your teammate so we are building the 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 same way of growing our children right and 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 the, and the adults of the future i'm strongly convinced about it I th Hey everybody, this is just the Bray Train sending out a personal little video diary to all you people out there where I am going to document me riding most of the way between Singapore and Tokyo for the 2019 Rugby World Cup. It's number one is because um, it's part of my business, I do Rugby Lovers Guide to Asia. Number two is I want to bring a lot of exposure to the, to the rugby clubs and the rugby NGOs and charities. Also on a personal level, I just want to break uh, the funk I've kind of felt I've been into for the last 10 years. So for the next 12 months, I poured myself into the Singapore to Tokyo campaign, but it still wasn't enough. I needed help, and it came from Louisiana. We in Singapore, baby! Gift 
from Gift Time Rugby USA is a extroverted tour de force. Say hi to my people out there. <laughs> Which makes up for my um social shortcomings. This place is unbelievable. Oh, no! It's not just it's like bleh, bleh, bleh. What's he supposed to do? Morons, a bunch of morons. Guys, picture with me. Picture. Australian. G'day mate. You can use my phone. But what unites us is a hunger for adventure. After KL, Kuala Lumpur. Gift, where are we? We're in Fiji! Mount Fuji, baby! Our love of Asian rugby culture. One, two, three, set up! Rugby is, is starting to develop here in Cambodia for women as well. Valkyries, the mighty, mighty Valkyries! The mighty and allows us to overcome incredible, incredible obstacles. It's just got so thick. It's just so thick here. Now it's pouring down rain again. But coming to this Thai-Cambodia border has renewed all the aggression. So the whole thing's gone buggered. I got hit. What? I got Thailanded by a motorbike. I can just feel that knee, that ankle just going in all the wrong directions under the weight of my body. But that, that doesn't compare to the pain of, of failure. I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. And that's what I've been worried about this whole time. We're out here, we're running out of energy, we're running out of money, and we're feeling isolated. And yet at that critical moment, friends, family, sometimes complete strangers come on board. Before you know it, we're back in the game. Tokyo, here we come. Making a comeback. Four weeks, 2,300 miles, five countries. After all the trials and tribulations, this ride had become deeply personal. All that mattered now was getting to that Rugby World Cup game in Tokyo. Hey, yeah, buddy. All right. Be easy. Go check out redearthfilms.vhx.tv to get your copy of Singapore to Tokyo any way we can. That's redearthfilms.vhx.tv. And I think that makes sense. And I think the, a lot of that also goes back to what the culture of the area is going to be telling you. Because I think nowadays, especially with the internet and stuff, there's so much information. So it's not as if, you know, whether good or bad, that the kids do not have access to know about the aspects of bullying and, and these things, but it's the, it's the understanding. And I think for what you're saying is this helps with better with the understanding than it is just the knowledge of... Yes, is living it yeah. in reality. is exactly. uh, facing the same problem together and uh, being used to live shoulder to shoulder. Right. No, and, and, and I think this one will kind of works into this last question that I, this last set of questions that I have and uh, can get, you know, and I'll wrap it up. But, you know, obviously the World Rugby announced this new women's rugby uh, schedule. And uh, when it comes down to the aspect of equitability, we're, it seems like they're kind of pressing more and more forward. A lot has seemed to, to, to push towards that. You know, for you, especially with this experiment that you want to do, and, and obviously with your, what you're envisioning, you can see can happen with rugby. What do you feel like this, this new schedule, uh, more opportunity for women to play, a.k.a. more opportunity for women to be seen, and subsequently for both boys and girls being able to see them play, how do you feel like this can either can impact what you're hoping to be able to develop um, in terms of your system? I, I yes, sorry, but my I didn't put the the cable. Sorry. Oh no worry. Hey, look, you know, art, 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 art wants to express itself in any way possible, way shape possible. All right. Sometimes it just needs to get away from itself and just like Ooh. let me. Everything's <laughs> funny. Well, I think that the real point is, um, how can I begin? Soccer. Mm -hmm. We have a big light on, on, on the female side. 
Right. But and we've got Juventus. I don't know if you know the big name of the Italian soccer, Juventus, Milan. They are super, super rich. Right. And they began with the female soccer, not because they are a good heart or thing to the quality, because they don't have. They just uh, attract half of the market. Yeah. So until you don't you don't create a market for the female, we are speaking about merchandising, licensing. We are really ground uh, putting the feet on the ground, right? So they create the the female movement. They not create. They supported the the female team in soccer to earn more money. Okay. Okay. So I think that in reality, it doesn't matter why. For me, if, if they help the, the female side raising and just emerging from, from the sea, okay, you've got your interest. I'm, a, I'm, I'm more happy that, that girls can play because you are supported them. Also for your finality. And it's a sort of exploitation in a right. certain kind because we are speaking, but, but money moved the world. We could, right. we could not do nothing for, against it. We just take the good side and try to develop the system. And that's what I was wondering, like, how do you feel like it's going to, it can actually help impact the system and impact your, your intent to improve the system in, in a positive way? Or do you think it's something that can be a drawback? No, I think that now soccer, the female soccer is in, in Italy are growing really fast mm -hmm. and they are quite uh, strong in the right. So my opinion is that we need to find a sponsor for the female side right. in every nation. Because, for example, in Italy, we don't have sponsor for the female side. We right. just have the same sponsor of the men that we are inside of the contract, male and women. Right. But we don't have visibility. And it's, it's just a cat who just uh, beat her at the, the, the tail. Right. I don't know if it's in English. It's, it's a cat and mouse game, just basically you're just going around in circles over. Exactly. And over. So until we don't have visibility, we could not be interesting right. for for big count for, for a big um, sponsor. And I wrote a project some four years ago that it was called Six Nation for Women, mm -hmm. just to attract um sponsor um interested to the social responsibility because my idea was that every every country could be the witness of an issue of the women world for example um i i'm the ambassador of the ovarian cancer association and uh, it's the ethical sponsor of the nation the azzurre the nation the female national team and how this sponsor pay it paying information, not in money. So we organize tour in every club of the fe who have got a female team, just speaking about prevention for the ovarian cancer. So and and in this moment, the club could be uh, invited all the female community of the town, so we can be connectors of good information for normal life because we've got a life outside of the pitch. So my idea was that each nation could be witness of a, an issue, a female issue. We for the wealth, someone else for the glass ceiling. I don't know, England for the glass ceiling, France for the violence. So everybody took a team. And so we can just play uh, being the first ethical uh, championship in the world, having a logo that reminds us that we take care about the women inside and outside of the pitch. Right. And so every time that you go playing in another country, this country organizes a congress about the theme that the team guests uh, are witness for. Right. And so this could be interesting for someone who are speaking about this, such a responsibility. And so this is a way that makes difference from men because we can experiment better because we are smaller. Right. So less money goes around us and we can do more experiment but let's experiment but yeah take advantage of it and be able to see where you can go because then when the moment when the time comes for the big pot to to create now you already have you know exactly what the audience is looking for you know exactly what you want to promote and present and you want to make sure that you're able to to show that in totality and uh 
obviously the money can come along with that overall yeah so you have to build before your uh, your audience and, and then you, knowing how attract so we, we we just have to work so, so many things but until we don't have our sponsor there won't be enough money to grow a big uh, a big event i'm really sorry for the world cup of the new zealand they, that they could not do it but it was a lot for us yeah i'm speaking about the italian side we are in, inside our houses from more than one year yeah how we can compete with uh, a new zealander that doesn't have any virus and they play every day right they kill us <laughs> <laughs> no but it's true, it's true. I, i'm not speaking only about this but yeah. the most important things is in that moment they were working really well about uh, advertising about um, visibility mm -hmm. and we could um, show a bad level of war of rugby because of our problem of health right. so if you are not trained and we lose 70s zero because obviously you've got the possibility to train always and we in our houses doing weight because we could not go out from mm -hmm. our doors what is the level that we could show Right. to the to, to the to the advertise to the to the television and now become the negative backlash because yes so uh, they are not at the level they are not do, do, playing a, a good rugby we are able to play a good rugby because we arrived second in the in the six nation we didn't arrive six but but obviously there is something higher this virus we have to think that is not good I, probably i'm saying i've got my one of my best friends she's a biologist and she said to me, Erika, this virus is not good, even bad. It's a virus. It doesn't have a thinking brain who say, ha ha. No. He doesn't he touch black, white, blue, yellow, no colors, not rich, poor. No, he doesn't make any difference. Right. We just have to understand what of good make us develop. True. It just, it just is. And that, no, no, and that's, that's really true. And, and it's an aspect I didn't even think about. And, and don't get me wrong. Like for me, I was a little, it sucked a little bit because I was really excited to be able to go. Uh, Cause I finally got media passes or it was set up to get media passes for it, but it makes sense. And in terms of what is the macro effect of all these actions that occur. Yeah. So moving it over and we'll see what even happens with the Olympics um, for, for this year. But the macro effects of poor play or great play or surprise play, because we saw an impact from 2017. There needs to, clearly there's, there's, there, we know there's something there and it continues to grow at a high rate, but, um, and, and, and what it does for every other part of the sport in the country, whether yours or anybody else's, it has a direct effect because these are visibility aspects that, that kick in. So yeah, you want to be able to be in a position where you can at least, where everybody has an opportunity to present their best, even despite the Yes, story. because being, being fit, everybody trained and ready for the competition, our level of rugby would be higher right. and, the, and the matches more interesting and the, the visibility, they, they would put the focus on a good level of rugby, not right. a, 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 um, a different level because of a, the pandemic side, not because we didn't train. Right. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Erica, you know, I, 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 I gotta say, I, man, I'm, I'm legitimately here. I'm just like, I'm learning so much. There's so much, <laughs> there's so much to still know. Um, but um, I want to know where can people, I guess, maybe find out more information or even better yet, be able to help be support what it is that, um, you know, what it is that you guys are trying to do in Italy, whether from the outside or inside, but, you know, really to the most, what, what, what we be, can continue to do to make sure that we're pushing everything forward the way it needs to be. But um, I'm the, the good side of this virus because I try to, to mentalize on it because if I have to think all oh, my project destroyed you'll lose your mind in that yeah. yes <laughs> uh, it's the fact also that there were more communication on internet yes. and uh, for this I I was really lucky and I met Carrie Hefferman 
of the United of the US uh, Women Rugby Foundation. Mm -hmm. And so we are just uh, writing one each other, thinking what we can do together. And uh, thank you to um, uh, Fabio Pirola, that is a train, is a coach that know her when when he went to the United States. So we are building already relation to try to put our best in common and uh, I really hope that we can be, because you are more forward than us on the female sector about association because you've got this big association who's got all the referees and and the players but it's not women is world who work for the women because for the same thing that I've said at the beginning it's not because you are a woman that have to train a, a women uh, team or you are a man. No, we are different. So we have a different mind, a different way of behavior, or also um, understanding information. Because, as usual, uh, there is also a book. No, man comes from Mars and women from Venus. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. But right. the thing that is important is always not worse, not better, exactly. different. Exactly. So from these things, we are looking to you as you are working uh, and you worked already in all these years. And because in reality, uh, I discovered that uh, your, the, your women begin before us. So on one side, we are more developed on one side, but you are more forward in how you are put together association and your numbers are higher than ours. So, but we are differently uh, culturally. And so this is the most important things because just exchanging information and thinking, oh, how you did this? But why you are, you are, your seven is so developed? Right. Because our seven rugby, we are, we are kilometers distance, not even planet, <laughs> cosmos, because we don't have enough girls. So until for this, I'm so strongly working on the base. Because until I don't enlarge the number of players, how I can do a, a good selection and, and select for the 15 and for the 7? Right. Well, we have to concentrate on one thing's done well. No, I, I agree. And, and, and look, it goes back again. Once you understand how to be able to create the system and be able to set it up in a way that it becomes self-generating, you know, that it is able to provide the level needed and I, I think even here in the u.s we're, we're still working and as, as much as you can say that the it, it might be ahead of italy but we're even still trying to figure out our own system itself uh from utilizing the the schools to be able to have people enter in at a rate that they don't have to pay or they don't have to pay as much so then when they do scale up you're able to you know now filter more in the best and i think within women's side it's been a lot easier because there's less contact sports like just less sports so we get more of the best women available and i think you see the increasing level of production and and play that goes along with it which only lets you know how far this this uh this ceiling can be from the women's side both locally and and globally but it always comes back to setting up that system and, and like you said, you know, if, if you're being innovated and in, in, in this day and age where we are, there's so much information out there, we have to be innovative. There's no longer that, you know, we just, just do what we've always done. And, you know, if somebody comes, then they come and hopefully they ask somebody else. It's like, no, we have to come and bring them in. We have to make sure that we are cultivating them into it, make sure that they're feeling the community of it. And then. After that, making sure we we continue to develop and train them as, as they choose to want to go. So make that choice easier for them. Yeah, it's just, it's just to present the new things. Just just changing a bit the color, because our sport is inclusion. Right. It's naturally inclusive. So we are. I'm not speaking about uh, saying thing that we that are new. Just discover the hot water. It's just a, a different storytelling yep. because at the end is how you tell things. This is the matter. The shape are, are, are contents. Agreed. And so we have to understand how to, how, how to just tell what we do every day in our club because we fight against bullying always. Right. Because obviously our kids come from many different kinds of, of family. 
any different kinds of, of uh, culture and, uh, and, and education because there is something lucky and someone less lucky. Right. And are not, you are, could be super talented, but your family doesn't transmit you the, the good attitude toward the other one. So it's fantastic that uh, when I would say that when we speak about the defense, and the fastest that you know you have have to wait a bit the last the, the the slowest just to be all together a big wall you know otherwise if the fastest starts and the and the, the other you just hold, create hold. a hole yep. so it's just a way to say okay i i don't go on, on my path not pace pace pace, yeah. pace. i don't go on my pace because just slowing a bit we can be together right. and being more strong there is a way of saying that i don't know if i translate good if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go, go together i like that i like that that's so basically it, it, i like that i love that so much you're basically pulling pulling everyone together and keeping everybody in, in the eye i love that you want to go fast be alone if you want i like that <laughs> My translation is, I don't know, but oh. I give the sense. It translated perfectly. It translated perfectly. So, man, no worries. But Erica, thank you so much. I, mm -hmm. I, I truly do appreciate the time. And like I said, I'm I'm learning so much. Just just know, we, we, we're we going to have to do a part two of this. I just want you to know this, this will happen. We're going to have to do a part two because I, I want to know, especially the progress that happens moving forward. Okay. Um, I'm and, able. <laughs> and and I do want to ask, um, where is the place that people can at least follow what the progress can be, uh, whether social media or... or yeah, I, I, just the, the Italian Federation has got a site who always uh, quite uh, working well. Well, otherwise, uh, I can give you my email. They can write me. They, if they, oh, if they ask, want to ask me information or whatever, because... Uh, this is the, uh, I'm not far, I'm far just uh, in the net, but uh, I can reach, no problem. I, for me, it, I'm really, I feel honored to be useful because uh, obviously the, the energy doesn't go in one side. It does, I always go in two sides. So uh, giving information, I receive information because I do like this and, and you will answer me. I do like that. And also I be more, um, uh, informed on what's going on on the world. No, agreed, agreed. Um, well, do you want to give them your email, or do you want to be like, yeah. hey, no, no, no. And my email is Erica dot Mori at gmail dot com. So super easy. My name dot surname and I know uh, dot. How do you say? Dot. Yeah, yeah dot or point but dot you usually go dot com dot com oh, so write me absolutely absolutely erica mori thank you so Bravo. much <laughs> yo i want to thank erica thank you so much for coming on the show telling your story uh truly appreciated it and i can't wait to do it again and guys thank you again for listening if you guys enjoyed this, definitely go and check out some of our other podcasts. We had last week Robert Perry of Curaçao Rugby, a small island in the Caribbean, but he's doing big things out there. Prior to that, we had Nicolette Pantor, captain for the Trinidad and Tobago uh, women's national team. We had Jess Nielsen of Canada Rugby. Uh, we had Keisha Ann Downed. We had my guy Ryan Ginty of Next Level Rugby running Fox Sports 2 MLR TV show. Uh, we had Sarah Alice Saul, former USA manager. Uh, even further back, we've had Tiara Mack, the congresswoman for, um, I'm sorry, not congresswoman, the state senator for Rhode Island. We had Ann Unwoosery of Black Girls Ruck. We had Coma Gandhi Fishbin uh, of the USA Rugby D Board of Directors. We had Dr. Melia Luciano, a World Rugby International Referee. 
We've had Kimani Davis of Roots Rugby in May. We'd had Freddie Henry Ajuda of Nigeria Rugby and uh, Life University. Derek Lipskin of Old Blue. We had Farah Douglas of uh, Mount St. Mary's. We've had Kyle and Tiana Granby, founders of Roots. Um, just we've, we've had such an eclectic group of people. Cheddar Emba, Charity Williams, Ram Eddings, like an eclectic group of people who have great stories, have great love for the sport of rugby, have been able to find and taken great advantage to be able to provide or prove or you know exemplify the opportunities that are created with rugby so i hope you guys get a chance to listen through those enjoy those ones through listen to the deep stories listen to my own rambles <laughs> but ultimately y'all it's just i wouldn't be able to do this without you guys so i hope that you guys know i hope that you are happy i hope that you guys are healthy and i hope that I, you know that you are absolutely highly favored i'm gonna check you out next time Cheers.